Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a new installment of This Week in EDM and these past two weeks in EDM, uh, because I missed a week. Uh, so we've got a ton of songs to talk about, I think it's about 34 here, so I will try to go through them as fast as I can. Uh, that's the goal for this episode, and uh, yeah, let's do it. So starting off in the trash category, just one song, we've got Will I Am and Britney Spears with Mind Your Business, the David Guetta remix. This is horrendous. Let's move on. Moving into the bad category, songs that I think are bad. And again, remember, this is just my opinion. We've got Uber with Liar, or UBUR, I'm not sure how to say exactly, but yeah, this one I just think isn't for me. Uh, maybe you'll enjoy it, but I just think it's kind of the worst kind of screechy, empty parts of bass music for me personally. They've got Nightmare featuring Lizzie Land with On My Mind. Uh, Slap House from Nightmare is just, um, okay, I guess. Another real nothing burger of a track. Uh, Lizzie does her best to give the track some life, but it just doesn't have much in it, and I did not really enjoy it. Then we've got Foxella and Britt Laurie with No Rules. Um, yeah, another one that I just wasn't feeling. I'm, I'm sorry, just super basic. I thought it was pretty short. Uh, well, it was short, and I thought it was pretty basic. Uh, and then it's the same drop twice in that time frame, too. Another kind of nothing burger that I did not really appreciate. And then we've got Don Diablo and Retrovision with Set Me Free. Um, I think this is a pretty empty clubhouse track with little to offer besides a simple beat at the club. And uh, didn't really do it for me. Then we're moving into the meh category, songs that I thought were uh, were just meh. And again, remember, these are just my opinions. Uh, we've got the Chainsmokers, Summertime Friends. Uh, it's short. It's the Chainsmokers. And honestly, it's uh, not that bad. Uh, pretty by the book, simple track. Way to go, Chainsmokers. Way to, way to make a meh song. And then we've got Arm & Hammer's uh, September Nights. The Together As One LP is out now on Monster Cat. And this song in particular is just another kind of standard commercial house track. Uh, the kind of first real commercial house song we've had on Monster Cat in a long time. Uh, but yeah, not loving the vocal performance here either. And I just thought it was pretty meh. They've got Pendulum's Color Fast. Uh, Pendulum's comeback of sorts in the last kind of year and a bit uh, hasn't really been all that interesting to me or really hit its mark for me personally. And uh, this track in particular is kind of just, um, I don't know, doesn't feel all that polished or interesting. Just as a kind of basic Pendulum song to me. And I think it's uh, just meh. Now we've got Gravos, which is Francis Durrell and Frank Zumo uh, featuring Tea Timers and Kramac. Erase Me. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just History Hangover with me disliking the kind of edgier, melodic stuff, but I really didn't have anything that resonated um, here with me again personally. Uh, I thought the vocals were really cheesy and the production was fairly generic, if not weak. Um, that being said, I do think the song is better than other songs on this list, and I do think it's not horrible. I just think it's really not for me. Then I've got Armin Van Buren and Anna Goodrun with uh, Love is a Drug. Another kind of standard big room trance song made for the festivals by Armin Van Buren here. And I thought this track was, uh, or sorry, I, I thought the track from the week prior was a lot better than this one personally. Uh, the one before would have been in good. Uh, but yeah, this one's just meh for me. And then we've got Roman Silver with Inferno. I believe the last single before the album is out on Seeking Blue. But uh, yeah, not really what I expected at all, considering what we had heard from the first bunch of singles already uh, for this upcoming album. Uh, regardless, it's a kind of simplistic house beat that really wasn't doing a whole ton for me. Um, I, Roman Silver is kind of known for this very fun, out there, kind of future bass, deep house hybrid of songs. And this was just like a kind of a basic club one for me. Wasn't, wasn't feeling it. Then we've got Galantis with Koala, uh, standard commercial slap house from Galantis with this. Uh, it's very by the books house track that will do well numbers wise. Um, but yeah, I, of all these kind of types of mindless tracks, I did enjoy this one considering that. So yeah. Then we've got Thirst, Get in the Car, uh, more drift funk on Monster Cat. And honestly, I think uh, this genre is in its last legs of popularity, personally. And uh, this track in particular, um, it is drift funk. It, it really is drift funk. Uh, it's nothing more and nothing less. It's quick. It's the same style and sound. And I think it's losing its luster. And then we've got Milk Blood featuring Barney Bones and Yosef uh, Larsimier, I want to say, with Easier, uh, a modern cover of the Ooh Child, Things Gonna Get Easier uh, by, oh, I can't remember who it's by. But uh, yeah, I, I while well, I've kind of loved Milk Blood's modern synth pop take on a lot of different styles of um, production, I just think this wasn't anything special. So yeah, eh, I was okay on it. They've got SARS, Crayon, and Skrillex with Yo Fam. Uh, pretty simple reggaeton beat here with little hints and splashes of Skrillex's new sound, uh, but overall didn't find it to be uh, overly 
yeah, fun, I guess. It was kind of just basic, simple, which is a lot of stuff on this list this last two weeks. Uh, oh, man, this song. Uh, we've got Marshmallow and Dove Cameron with Other Days. Um, this is a super odd song, and I really wanted to actually do an individual video on this song in particular. And if you'd like me to, let me know if you'd like to actually let me, or if you want me to talk about this in more detail. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a, like a, it's weird because it's a Crave you cover. Like, the original, like, flight facility is like, Animals do, they stir me well, I crave you. The very iconic Adventure Club remix, which got a lot of people into EDM uh, back in the like, kind of mid-early 2010s. But um, yeah, production-wise, uh, it isn't really that bad. Uh, it's a weird kind of future bass slash slap slash slap house hybrid. Uh, and the kind of warble drops are actually kind of fun for Marshmallow. Um, Dove Cameron's vocals are good, um, but it's just a really weird song. Uh, there's a lots of conflicting kind of thoughts and, um, I don't know, sentiments I have about this song. It's just, it's, it's just an odd one. Um, but I would genuinely listen to this more than, uh, or le- listen to this than, uh, like 95% of Marshmallow's other discography. It's, it's a weird song. The art is also horrible. Like, I just, I don't know. It's weird. Really weird. Uh, but then we got Vest Green with Frequency Fusion. Um, yes, it's house. Yes, it's speedy. Uh, but it's more like Quick House. I wouldn't really label this as Speed House as Monster Cat has. But uh, yeah, fairly standard track, all things considered. Uh, an instrumental kind of quick, fun, up, uppity beat house track. But uh, I got a nice and simple sound. Then we got Dirty Phonics with Burbank Nights. Uh, I appreciate the kind of instrumentation from this track, particularly in the guitar, but I just found it to be a little too same samey uh, to a ton of other songs, particularly the kind of rocky DNB ones. Um, and ironically, it feels like old Pendulum uh, because there is a Pendulum one on this, but I actually think this is better than the one Pendulum put out this week. But uh, yeah, I was pretty mad on it. They've got Tiesto with, uh, yeah, with both featuring Bia and 21 Savage. Uh, production wise, this is your kind of paint by numbers deep slap house from Tiesto, uh, which is actually pretty solid, I would say. I've kind of been okay on his stuff this past year, but uh, the vocal features in 21 Savage and Bia are really weird. They feel quite out of place on this track in particular. I genuinely think the, um, or genuinely think that the instrumentation. Wow, I genuinely think that the instrumental, a instrumental version of the song would be better than with the vocal features. Um, but uh, I think it would have gone good otherwise. Um, but yeah. Then we've got the good category. Moving on to songs that I thought were pretty solid. We've got Apache and Sophani Pemart with Devil May Cry. Uh, obviously, Apache has a bit of an orchestral style to his production and flair to it. Um, but this is barely EDM. This is almost practically straight up an orchestral song. It sounds like a kind of interlude of sorts for an upcoming project um, while not being an actual interlude, like a kind of a, a breathing room track for a track list. But they got Flux Pavilion and Conrank with Where You At. Uh, definitely one of the most unique tracks I've heard of 2023 thus far. Uh, the drops have this like glassy synth melody to it. And um, yeah, it, it's just like the rest of the drops in the first and the third kind of pull back and le- let this melody kind of go for it. And um, it's bizarre and I actually kind of liked it. Um, so yeah, I uh, enjoyed it. But then we got Manila Killa, Mern, and Run with Center of the World. Uh, this is a kind of progressive house track with a lot of girth to it, kind of big wall of sound synths and the bass lines to kind of keep the track from feeling too boring or kind of derivative. Um, but yeah, Run's vocals are top notch as always, and I thought the song was solid. Then we got Zoo and Devault with Take My Soul. The Days Before Grace EP by Zoo is out now. And uh, this is a little less baseline focused from Zoo, which is a nice little switch up that I did enjoy. Um, but uh, yeah, I like that it's a bit longer and fleshes out some of its atmosphere of this track in particular. So I'm not giving the whole EP a listen yet. I need to do that soon. And speaking of Speed House from earlier, we've got Chill and House of Panda featuring Milk with Ignite. Um, of all the Speed House I've heard up to this point, this is probably my favorite of it all. Um, it's not as like headstrong as some of the other Speed House tracks have been that I've heard, uh, but does keep the intensity going throughout. So I enjoyed it. Then we've got Alice in Wonderland and Memba with Fight or Flight. Um, well, this might be a little tame for my liking, all things considered with a kind of Memba and Alice in Wonderland collaboration. I thought the production was great and uh, overall had a ton of energy. And um, yeah, so I enjoyed it. I just wish it maybe was a little bit more to some extent. 
Uh, next, we've got R.L. Grime and Montello 2099 featuring Emmeline with Borderline. Um, I need this R.L. Grime project now. I need, I think it's an album. I've been loving the singles that he's put out up to this point, and his sound just feels so fresh. Um, this track in particular is just another solid single with um, lots of play to it, and I need a full-length project by R.L. Grime now. Uh, then we've got Former Hero smiling beside him. Uh, the beginning of the end of Former Hero, sadly, and the alias. Uh, but this track is just another really well thought out instrumental track with lots of quirky sounds and melodies. And um, I love how much uh, time uh, or like how long these tracks are and how you can really feel sort of something uh, with lengths of these tracks. So I would go Former Hero. Then we've got James Blake with Tell Me. Uh, the Playing Robots Into Heaven LP is out now. And if you've not already heard of James Blake, I would really encourage you to go listen to his stuff right now. Uh, his early albums are kind of like an old school atmospheric dubstep sound, not like the psh, like Skrillex sound, but like the actual kind of classical term of dubstep that is a little bit more subdued, um, which we would, I think most people would call liquid dubstep nowadays. But um, yeah, and his newer stuff is like this weird alternative R&B and like electronic hybrid that I've really been loving. Um, uh, his last LP from, I think, 2021, I adored a ton. Um, but yeah, this new album is leaning a lot more into the experience experimental electronic sounds, uh, very much a future garage album, I would say. Um, I didn't love this track as much as some of the other ones on this project, uh, but uh, yeah, I think the, this song does do a good job of kind of encompassing the sound of the record. Um, so please go listen to James Blake. I love James Blake. Uh, up next, we've got Effin with Thrills. Speaking of albums, we've got the Cheap Thrills debut album by Effin, and uh, whoo, this is the intro track for it, and I've been in been loving this one as well. Uh, this track does a brilliant job of also laying the foundation for the record, similar to the way that kind of Tell Me did from James Blake. And um, yeah, it's just got kind of gritty synths and crunchy bass lines. And I am also loving this. Go listen to Effin now. Uh, but that is it for the good category because we're moving into the standout category and we've got four songs in standout songs that I genuinely really, really, really loved. And, uh, I think you should go listen to them for sure. Uh, we've got Drulu with Foolish, Foolish, Foolish Fish. I don't want to, that's a tongue twister, but, uh, yeah, this is kind of the quintessential Drulu song to me. Uh, plucky synths, uh, brass instrumentation, high-pitched vocal chops. Uh, it kind of has all the sound elements, um, or all the kind of elements of a Drulu song that I absolutely love. Uh, this is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite, uh, single from an upcoming album by Drulu here. And, um, I am also excited for this album. Tons of good stuff coming out and has been out. Go listen to Drulu Foolish Fish. I got that one that time. And then we got Glacier with Koki Chant. Um, this has got to be the heaviest song that Glacier has made to date. It's got all the kind of jazzy, seldoming elements that you get from a classic Glacier track. Um, <coughs> sorry, I swallowed my breath there, but um, it just all packs a, like a punch behind it that we haven't really heard from a Glacier track in the past. And uh, I really, really like it. So go listen to that. And our penultimate track of the week is Throttle and Hello World with Weightless Feeling. Uh, this is just a lovely track, uh, a brilliant blend of their two styles here. And um, yeah, their own sounds aren't as overpowering or aren't really overpowering at all. Uh, and every little element is just kind of complementary of one another when it comes to like Throttle's more kind of drum and bass style of uh, like the backing beat here to Hello World's kind of crunchy, not, not crunchy, but like very like electronic in that sense of like digital. Digital is probably the best word to put it, um, but like digital sound bites throughout. And so uh, they don't overpower one another while be being quite complimentary. So yeah, uh, like I said, it's got a bit of a DNB beat to it despite uh, yeah, keeping it a little bit more reserved uh, to preserve the atmosphere of the track. So I liked it quite a bit. And the number one song in the last two weeks for me personally was Cloud Nun and Skybreak with Feelin' Free. Um, Cloud Nun on Uncaged, Skybreak making Heavy Garage. Uh, this was just a collab made in heaven for me. Uh, I love both these artists and love this collaboration. My only gripe with the song is that I wish the drops were just a little bit longer or maybe had a third element to it or third movement. But uh, yeah, so let me know what you think of any and all of these songs in the comment section below. And as always, there's a link to a Spotify playlist for all these songs if you want to just find an easy access that way. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.